Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Zadok from the Congregation of Israel, the Knesset of Jesus. It's a nice Sunday morning, and I'm out here at our uh, small, if you will, garden agriculture project out here in the city of Buffalo. Uh, we are growing organic vegetables. We even have some fruits here. And this is just, just a small project that we are into. And in the Bible it says, he who is faithful in the little shall be faithful in a lot. So if we, this is our fourth year dealing, uh, dealing with our garden. I'm gonna take you through, this is just the raised bed portion. We got some vegetables in here and stuff. And it's just an attempt to learn how to, one, work the land, which God has given to all mankind, and to learn how to replenish the land and be fruitful and multiply with it. And that's one problem we have today living in this culture where we don't produce anything no more. We aren't caretakers of the earth. You got big corporations in them, they're not taking care of it, but if you want to call anybody caretakers, they're the ones farming the land, they doing everything, they raising the animals, they doing it all wrong, but they're still the ones doing something, and we just go to the grocery store and we shop. So here, what we're attempting to do is, during the growing season, we grow a good portion of our own vegetables and our own fruits, and it is an attempt to get closer to understanding what it's gonna take in order to produce more food for ourselves and be more producers in the agriculture sector than just consumers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you in here and I'm just gonna point out some of the things that we growing, all right? Now right here, we have Brussels sprouts growing. These are, this is the Brussels sprouts uh, raised bed. Over here, you got uh, tomatoes growing. This uh, tomatoes in a raised bed. And we got more in the back. This is just a raised bed section. Then over here, you got uh, cauliflower growing and cabbage. Cauliflower and cabbage. Over here, you got, what was these? Hot peppers over here? We got hot peppers uh, growing over here. Over here we got green, uh, them, them, them sweet bell peppers. That's what these are. These are the sweet bell peppers. I'm gonna water all this stuff today. Sweet bell peppers. And then you come over into this section and over here we have, what is this over here? Tomatoes. These is tomato plants young tomato plants so in a deep part of the summer they should start uh giving us some kind of offshoot but this is just a small representation brothers and sisters it's not on a grand scale like we feed in the whole city but it is enough here for the members of our congregation uh, we come out here we pick fresh vegetables also the children uh, uh, come out here in the garden and they'll learn how to recognize vegetables plant vegetables um uh uh how to take care of it and get weeds out and things of that nature. So some of the children that's being homeschooled here, uh, this will be part of their project um, as harvest time comes, as we come into the season of the Feast of Tabernacles. But you know one thing, like it's a lot of laws and things that uh, exist where, where people will say, well, you know, uh, that's that Old Testament and you know a lot of them laws don't apply to us today. Well, let's, the Bible says ain't nothing new under the sun. And the only thing about it is, is that when your situation change and your lifestyle change, all of a sudden you find these so-called old laws applying. For instance, this is our fourth year farming this land. We got two more years to farm this land, and then in that seventh year, we won't farm it. Why? Because we're going to keep the law of the land Sabbath. That means once you have land, and once you're at doing agriculture on the land, then all of a sudden, here come the land Sabbath being kept. But for people who live in the city, the law of the land Sabbath don't apply. That don't mean the law isn't good. It just means you're not living a lifestyle that gives you the ability to actually even see God's laws manifest more in your life. So this is our attempt, and uh, he's been blessing it. And we're going to go to the back portion now, and I'm going to take you back there, and I'm going to show you some of the stuff going on back there. I got a lot of work to do back there. All right, y'all. Now, this right here, this is the stuff that we got in the ground. You could kind of see behind me, I think, you can see the rows. Uh, we got rows of food going uh, vertical this way, and then we got rows of food planted horizontally in the back portion here. Now this is going on right in the midst of the city. You can see, you know, we got the projects <laughs> over there. So 
Downtown is way off in the distance. This is going on right in the city. Now, we doing these things because we desire to get land eventually um, as a congregation without getting into too many details. Uh, we're doing things and uh, the Lord has been blessing us to be able to get closer in a position to be able to acquire land probably somewhere between 50 to 100 acres. And we're not under any impression that this is something that uh, we're just gonna do alone. We're not some big mega church. We're a small congregation of believers and we're out here trying to connect with others. And we've been getting good responses and so we just pray that the Lord keep us on a good path. Now, the thing about it is brothers and sisters that hey, you hear everyone talking about nationhood, nationhood. Well, what nation doesn't have an agriculture system? What nation doesn't have, a, 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 I guess what you would call cottage industries, which produce a, 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 the textiles and, and the things you need from your clothing to your shoe wear, a, 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 to your a, a hygienic products, all of these things. This is what nations do. We live in this quote unquote mingled nation called America and you depend on them for everything. They even got you buying water now, okay? Uh, 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 you pay water bills if you own property, you pay taxes, okay? Uh, if you wanna paint your house, you get your paint from them. Anything you wanna do, you get from them. Your vehicle you drive, the gas you get from them. Anything you need, they had something up here a couple years ago called the October Surprise Storm. It was like a big snowstorm in the middle of October, unexpected. Closed the city down. You had people, ha more than half the city ran out of power. People were in the grocery stores packing it out. When people got there too late, it wasn't a lot of food left for them. I ask you, what would have happened if the generators and the power would have went out at these stores? You don't eat. Your refrigerator's at home, food in the freezer is no good. Uh, all you got is probably some, 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 some non-perishable items, a couple things you may have had in the, up in the cabinet, but you people with them electric can openers can't even get the canned goods open. Uh, it's just, it's not a stab at anyone because I live in this society. I got a home, I got electricity. But the whole thing is, is that we have to get into a position to stop depending on these people for every single thing. If God is our father, then let our father take care of us more and let's depend on him and not depend on this surrogate father of this system, which has been given into the hand of Satan to do and to give to whomever he will. So one thing I know is that when the children of Israel were to come out of slavery and the bondage lifestyle under the Egyptian uh, system and culture, the first thing God did was gave him his laws. Secondly, he took him to a land. In order to be a people, you need land. There were other nations there who were willing to fight and die for that land. Why? Because the land is what's integral to your babies surviving, you surviving, your animals surviving, all life survives. Even it's written in the scripture that even the king eats from the field. Someone who sits up in a great mansion, a great castle and rule all men, when he sit down at night, you know where his food come from? It come from the field. This is what God has given man. He has given us the earth. So this is our project and us outside of our jobs, outside of our comfortable amenities here. We come out in here and we get our hands and our knees dirty. You go home a little sweaty, a little tired sometimes, but for some of y'all, when y'all keep tabernacles, y'all might not be bringing in the harvest and actually celebrating the harvest. That's actually what the Feast of Tabernacles is. It's the, when you bring in all the harvest to the field and you celebrate before the Lord for his plenteous and his blessing, we actually celebrate with harvest. Not just with what we brought from a store and we put it on the table and celebrate. We got some of that stuff too, but we bring stuff from the harvest. Now I'm gonna actually go in here and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that we got in this field.